Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box and today I want to tell you what I've observed from fishing with so many different experts on how to become an expert angler. Not a professional, that could be a guy, that could be a tournament angler, someone that just works in the industry. What I'm talking about is an expert, a person that seems to go out there and catch them time and time and again. So let's get started. Now some of this information I'm going to go over may seem blatantly obvious to you, but what I want to encourage you to do if you're like, oh that seems obvious, is to challenge yourself on the obvious and really think, do you do this? Are you really trying to get better at this particular subject? So what I'm going to start off with is education. And right away you're going to be like, huh? Education? Well first of all, fishing, angling, you don't have to be fit. You can be trim, you can be fat, you can you can be a toothpick. It does not matter. Fishing intelligence is huge. It's not the most fit guy out there winning all these professional uh, tournaments out there. No, it's generally the smartest guy, but it takes a lot more than smart. So what do I want to tell you is constantly challenge your brain to learn new things because all of the experts I fish with are very intelligent individuals at a particular subject. I'm not saying if you struggle at reading, writing, or math, uh, go try to get better at that. No, just constantly challenge your brain to absorb new information. What that does is it helps your critical thinking and allows you to absorb more info. So try to learn new things, learn new subjects. Like for myself, I'm always trying to learn more about waters, always trying to learn more about species, always trying to learn more about the moon, how it affects fish, uh, how pressure affects them. Always challenge your brain. For the second thing, pick a species. A uh, species that's around you, a very popular species in your area and focus primarily on that. For me, I started off with bass fishing. For you, it may be pike, musky, trout, kokanee. It does not matter, but what you need to do is saturate yourself in that species. And what I mean is, get it, gain as much literature as you can, whether that's the internet, whether that's to talking to guys at local tackle shops, fishing forums, Facebook groups, whatever it takes, Follow all of them that surround that particular species. You have to absorb yourself. Understand that species is seasonal movement, how it's affected by different type of bait fish. Learn the bait fish in that area and how that bait fish is affected by certain types of elements and pressure and rain and time of year. What that's going to do is it's going to paint a full circular rotation picture around that species and it has to land somewhere into that particular category. So focus on one species to start and whatever that species is saturate yourself and try not to indulge in too many other things unless this is not overly important to you on actually getting better then don't worry about this video and you should probably shut it off now being very analytical is number three so analyzing everything you're doing and having a plan of attack so what I want to tell you, before you go to that local pond or the big lake or a creek next to your house, it doesn't matter the body of water. You need to have a plan, okay? You need to look at it on a map or picture it in your head and say there's this particular little weed bed. I want to fish it this particular way. There's this other part of the creek. I want to try this. And if this doesn't work out, I'm going to try this. Jot it down on a paper. When you get out there or a notepad in your cell phone, I mean, this is 2019, jot it down on your cell phone. Don't write it on paper. Don't be primitive. Be more advanced. This is part of your education. Just plan. But anyhow, jot it down. Um, jot it down into your notepad. Go out there and fish. And if you write it down, you're much more apt to physically try it on the water and you're less likely to get pre-distracted and you're going to try your plan a you're going to try your plan b you're going to try your plan c and when you get home open those notes and wrote down write down how that day played out for you this is going to be critical now look at what you did and look at it with skepticism and say well hypothetically that may have not been the case and jot down these notes if you were physically remembering what happened, writing down what happened, it will stick in this like filing cabinet part of your brain. I'm not joking. The best anglers I know all keep logs. Would they ever share that log with you? That's probably really doubtful, but they keep logs and it embeds this into their brain and you'd be amazed at how they can 
opening up, open up that file cabinet in the middle of a random day, in the middle of January or February, and pull that information and make something happen. I believe we're on number four, and if I hold up number four anyways, and I held it up two or three times, it'll still be kind of funny. But positive energy. This is insanely critical, um, and this is something that gets me, and I'm going to tell you, I've been guilty of this. I've been, I had a negative conversation, something didn't work out. I was worrying about paying a bill or something, or somebody was talking to me about something very pre-distracting before I went to the water. Instead, stop, grab your favorite snack, grab your Starbucks, your Pete's Coffee, whatever you're a fan of. Listen to some of your favorite music before you get to the water. What this does is it changes the chemical balance in your brain to a positive energy. And believe it or not, you're gonna be able to access that filing cabinet of information and fishing puzzle pieces that you're gonna be able to assemble uh, throughout the day to get a better look at that greater picture of how things are playing out that day because you had positive energy and at the same time if you lose a fish you need to tell yourself to look at it completely differently you got that fish to strike it's not about losing the fish and you'll learn how to land more fish once you hook them and uh, lose them because you'll learn from that plain and simply obvious but understand to not let that information go on what you did to trigger that bite with frustrations of I can't believe I lost that fish. Basically, count it. Count that as a catch. Yeah, you may not have a pitcher to hold up with it, but count it as a catch. Tell yourself, I got them. Doesn't matter if your buddy say, hey, if you didn't get it in the boat, it doesn't count. You actually hooked the fish, you tricked that fish into biting, that's a catch, you did it right. Catalog that information and stay positive. All of the best guys I know are very, positive guys out in the boat. They have a very positive mentality. Some listen to the music the whole time they're fishing. Some of them sing out loud. And you'll often hear me on the show singing to myself. I run a roll for a while, dude. Chasing little bass. Stick to those fatty old greens that you're used to. Making up popular songs with fishing lyrics. It's just about that positive energy. Number five, become the weatherman. Weatherman disappeared. We remember the weatherman used to be horrible. We would watch it and like he said, well, in a couple of days it's going to be nice and sunny and then it'd be pouring down rain. Well, now we have our cell phones. We have all this information right here at our fingertips, guys. Learn uh, what's coming up. Look at the patterns, okay? Look, is it going to be a warming trend? Is the nighttime temperatures in steadily increasing in warmth? So we know our water temperature is going to be warming, therefore our fish activity uh, could be more activity, therefore we can fish faster. Uh, is it a cooling trend? Are the nighttime temperatures dropping down uh, substantially? Are the fish going to be backing off and becoming much more sluggish to where we're going to finesse fish? Is it a big giant moon? Are our tides going to be affected? Um, is it a full moon? Are the fish feeding at night? Is it a new moon? That's a black moon. Are the fish for feeding first thing when the sun comes up? This is all stuff you should know. Is the barometer dropping? Is the pressure dropping? Is that coming up? Do I see that in the forecast? Okay, maybe I'm going to fish faster. Uh, let's, it's post frontal, okay? The storm already came through. It's two days past that. We'll try fast when we get there, but we most likely know from being a weather man or a weather woman, if you're watching, um, that now the pressure is going to be increasing. The fish are going to be backing off. Be very critical when it comes to your weather, your moon, your sun. The ultraviolet rays of the sun can be extra intense that day, and you may need to fish in heavier cover or deeper. And if you don't look at an ultraviolet calendar, you may not even know this or the day that you're out there. Be very observant. Check those apps. Get There's tons of free apps on your cell phone you can get to check and it's going to help you analyze throughout the day. Being an expert researcher. I believe that's number six now. Internet, like I've already said, check all the groups, type in the name of the lake, hashtag search the lake on Instagram, call up local tackle shops, ask what's going on. And this doesn't even hurt if you live in the area. Call and talk shop, doc talk it through the phone, doc talk it through your cell phone. Get maps out there. There's always some sort of information or some other bite that's going on that other people have figured out. And I have, I can tell you this right away. I live on a private lake. I manage the lake. I grow my fish out here big. I, I love fishing here. But my buddy Travis Averill comes over the other day and he goes to a part of the lake. I haven't caught a fish in four or five months and sticks uh, one just under five pounds. 
And I'm like, where'd you get that? And well, I caught it on this particular spot. And I'm like, what? And he threw this one particular bait that I didn't think applied. And if I would have never communicated that or seen what anybody else had to say, I wouldn't have tried that. Since then, I went back, caught a four and another five pounder, and that was with his information. And yeah, I went back there and perfected it with a slightly different bait, but it was because of that information I acquired. It is my lake. I fish it all the time. Should I have already known? Maybe, but there's always a different approach from somebody else. So stay saturated, talk, find as much research as you can from maps, uh, from messenger boards, from fishing groups. Stay involved in that and also approach those guys with positive energy. Don't be a hater. If someone posts up a picture and it looks like a three pounder and they're saying it's five pounds, don't be a hater about it. Just say, hey man, cool. How'd you catch that? Great catch. Because it is still a great catch. They still love what we love. So absorb as much information as you can. I believe this is number seven. You have to be able to suffer and survive. And what I mean by this you have to deal with the cold. You have to deal with the wind. You have to deal with the heat. You have to deal with long drives. Sometimes it's a two hour trip and I'm like, I think the fish are biting there and I talk myself out of it and I go 45 minutes away and I'm like, you know what? I just wasted five hours on the water. I could have drove that extra distance where I'm pretty sure it was going down and caught them. Or you get out to the lake and it's just so dang cold and the bite's slow and your brain starts to tell you you've had enough to exit. If you let that happen and you don't condition yourself and push through it, don't be a wussy, push through it. You know if you're in trouble. If you're really gonna be in trouble, then yeah, get out of there, okay? I'm not telling you to stay in the middle of a tornado and get yourself taken out. I'm telling you to try to push your limitations. With heat, stay hydrated. With cold, just bring some extra warmth. Whatever you have to do, if you need to step inside, warm up, go get a hot coffee, step back out, do that, okay? Push yourself. The best guys I know are constantly pushing themselves. The most successful tournament anglers of all time, I always hear from all the different guys, oh, they pre-fish longer, they push themselves. It was pre-sun up to past sun down. They went longer. They, they put that time in and they blocked out everything else their brain was telling them to get comfortable and they pushed. Don't be a wussy push. Preparation. Guilty. Okay, look. You generally, if you're educated enough in fishing, and you're probably a novice bass fisherman, and you're watching this, or a novice uh, other angler at these categories, and you get out to the lake, and we all know we're guilty, I'm guilty, okay? To where you thought you may try this particular lure, but you didn't have it tied on, you didn't have it conveniently located, so you talked yourself out of getting it. Um, an extra rod, an extra reel, um, pliers conveniently handy. If you're not prepared, you start to naturally take shortcuts. And when you start to naturally take shortcuts, you start getting this deflate, deflated mentality. And what it is, it's the, oh, I'm out on a court and there's a bunch of good basketball players. I fish, I missed the first couple shots, so I'm gonna pass it off. And you start becoming reluctant to try new things. In angling, in all sorts of fishing, whether it's bass fishing and all sorts of the other ones, if you do not have, um, those tools easily accessible to try. I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna go over to this different spot, I'm gonna go to that different spot. If something is changing your mindset to do that and that's lack of preparation or a negative mentality, you need to get rid of that quick. You need to do something to change that. Exercise changing this. Put yourself in an uncomfortable environment and try to critically about think about things. Walk out in the backyard at nighttime with your t-shirt on when it's cold and try to jot down notes about things on your phone. If you're texting someone a message, get out there. Try this. You can't be interrupted by other things. It's the best critical thinker that can think comfortably and that is prepared that consistently catches them. Now you're going to hear about this time on the water to become a better fisherman and I'll tell you what right now I believe it's 75 percent research 25 percent time on the water but if you are already a novice or you fish your little local tournaments um, that's awesome okay you probably learned a ton of information and now it should be more time on the water as you absorb more information out there and you feel like you're pretty confident in a variety of techniques, then it becomes time on the water. And the reason why is 
your mechanics become better, your application of using this. I can explain to you that there's this particular way to work a lipless, but until you do it a few times yourself, um, it's not going to feel right. Your hookup to land ratio, how you fight a fish. When I explain something like your timing on setting the hook on a frog, this is where you need that time on the water to do it. And don't think that time on the water means getting on a $50,000 boat, um, going, driving two hours to the lake. If you have a pond next to your house and you get bit two times in a full day, that is going to make you better than going to a lake where you get 50 fish a day. Yeah, time on the water is going to help you there. Critical thinking when it's tough is a much better exercise than critical thinking when it's easy because you're not critically thinking about what you did. You're thinking about how much fun you're having. And yeah, I love those days too. But the tough days are better learning platforms. Last but not least, guys, make sure you're having a great time. If you're not having a good time doing this, just just don't think about anything I said. Get back to the grassroots of this. Enjoy fishing. What I want to do is I want to help you put more fish in the boat, catch more fish. Appreciate this, guys. Uh, make sure to follow us here at Lucky Tackle Box on all of our social media channels. Follow me, uh, Informative Fisherman, on my YouTube. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Best of fishing out there.